There's a lot of activity taking place in Maldivian parliament due to the diplomatic controversy over their mantris and members of parliament from the ruling party who had uh, thrown insults and jibes at Indians and the Prime Minister, specifically at Prime Minister Modi. Now the Maldives and members of parliament are seeking a response on this controversy. There's a diplomatic standoff that was escalating. So the Maldivian members of parliament, specifically those from the opposition parties, have moved the parliament to summon the suspended mantris. The MPs have moved uh, to summon the foreign minister and suspended deputy minister, seeking a response over the diplomatic row. Uh, remember that uh, it was here that the deputy ministers and the foreign minister might have to come to respond to the question of the opposition party. So the opposition parties, uh, and, and remember parties that have had the president who had good relationship and equation with India earlier, they are primarily questioning how was this allowed to continue, happen with regard to a friendly country like India who, that's always been a friend in need for the island nation. All right, Maldivian tourism industry has directly condemned the anti-India remarks and are urging a reconciliation. They realize the repercussions this could have because of uh, the tourist influx from India, which is at maximum since the past three to four years at least for Maldives. Now, uh, condemning the anti-India remarks, the tourism industry of Maldives are urging reconciliation amid the diplomatic spat. Now, the recent controversy, remember, between India and Maldives were triggered by derogatory insulting remarks made by Maldivian officials, uh, which is le leaders from the ruling party, sitting ministers who have now been suspended. Prime Minister Modi uh, had visited Lakshadweep and that is when this whole fracas had started. Uh, this has led to a significant reaction from Maldivian tourism industry. They have strongly condemned the, re uh, uh, the remarks and also emphasized uh, the critical role of India in the Maldivian economy urging for the mending of the bilateral ties. We will continue to strengthen and drive the economic industry and boost visitor, member, visitor numbers. The government has plans to diversify the tourism product and offer new experiences. Initiatives include a top tier school of hospitality and exploring sports, medical, and cultural tourism. China was our member, China was our number one market pre-COVID and it is my request that we intensify efforts for China to regain this position. This is very interesting. What you just heard was the president of Maldives saying how China is an ally because he's on a visit of a state visit to China and in fact is literally urging China to now help build the tourism industry in Maldives. In many ways, a significant political message to India as well with his silence, is it? Remember, Maldives for now is literally urging because the tourists who come from India are at the highest level. Maldives seems to be feeling the heat after the backlash. If not the top leadership, the tourism industry, the citizens of Maldives are realizing the, the backlash that could lead to the tourism industry of Maldives. Maldivian travel tour agents have now made an appeal to even ease my trip. Remember the travel portal that had said they'll suspend here on flight bookings for the island nation? Maldives tour agents want ease my trip to now revoke that suspension. Maldivian president also appears to be in damage control mode while on a visit to China he requested Beijing, interestingly, to boost the number of tourists to the island nation. Till 2019, this is just to give you a background. China had topped the list with maximum tourists, but it was when COVID hit, when there were hardly any tourists going to Maldives, which depends largely on tourism. It was the Indian tourists who flogged the island nation and managed to even revive its economy, as experts in Maldives say. This has boosted the tourism in, uh, in the island nation, but because of Prime Minister's visit to Lakshadweep, many said, why even bother with international tourism when we have the same geographical similarities in domestic tourism as well and special packages are now being introduced for Lakshadweep. And on the ground reporting from Maldives is our foreign affairs editor Geeta Mohan uh, speaking to those local travel agents in Maldives 
who are clearly facing the damages, the repercussions, the consequences of the remarks made by the sitting ministers of the government who are now suspended. Listen in to what these travel agents have to say. What is the stand and position of the association of uh, travel agents? Uh, you as the vice president uh, know exactly how the travel agents are looking at this entire issue. Uh, they're worried, obviously, and uh, the, uh, we have called to the government to take prompt action. And they have, and the government, I believe, they have done their part of it, and they have released from the tourism, uh, sorry, from the foreign ministry also a statement, and they have suspended the individuals which have, you know, done the damage actually. And yes, we are currently monitoring the number of. Uh, Cancellation, and I, as per now, which I believe that it's not that hmm. escalate to a level that we should get much worried. But yes, if it goes like this, it will impact the industry. Bit. Yes. Um, also, a, um, a lot of strong statements have come from. Um, stars, Bollywood actors. Yes. Um, Maldives had become a hub not just for stars who come here to holiday but also as a destination to shoot. Yes. Uh, how do you see that being impacted given that the industry has reacted very strongly with regards to the statements coming from the Maldives? Yes, it's sad to see that uh, the people who have helped us to promote the Maldives, like stars from India, is going against us just because of few more events, how they reacted, and I would like to request them not to escalate the problem. Right, the mass majority of more women doesn't believe in such ways, and I feel sorry on behalf of uh, more events. I would like to say sorry for the Indian citizens and the Indian government, and not to escalate this problem, and you know. We've been, uh, the bo both countries been very, you know, united for a long period of time. So I would like to request on that manner, actually. So remember, all of this had happened because Prime Minister Modi had visited Lakshadweep and uh, many here in India, specifically supporters of uh, the government, of, uh, of the fact that domestic tourism is also so great in India, why not promote it, led to this whole Maldives Lakshadweep comparison and the comments by the sitting ministers of Maldives. Now, for now, India's smallest union territory, however, is becoming the big one on the travel bucket list. The question is, if you want to now go to Lakshadweep, even though a lot of infrastructure is yet to be developed, it's now happening. India today's Shibimol KG is in Lakshadweep. And she decided to decode for you how you can make that travel if you want and what Lakshadweep really looks like. Well, we are right now at Kavarati, the capital of Lakshadweep Union Territory. And as we know, Lakshadweep is in talks as, uh, you know, it's being promoted as one of the most beautiful. It is one of the most beautiful destinations for tourists across the country and abroad. Uh, in fact, uh, we are right now at the embarkation point where the ships, the cruises and the vessels actually uh, stops. And this is from where people actually board and deboard. In fact, uh, uh, right now you can see a vessel closer to me. This is uh, the one of the vessels that transport, uh, that commutes from Kavarati. Navarati to Agati and the other islands. Now there are 36 islands in Lakshadweep, out of which uh, 10 are inhabited. Uh, once you reach Kavarati, you can t go to Agati and other islands using a vessel that takes you like one and a half hours. Now, Kavarati to Agati is around one and a half hours is what the locals were telling us. I do have a family here. Uh, they have... Hi, 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 hi ma'am. You are good name? Yes, my name is Alolika. Where are you coming from? I am coming from Calcutta. Good. Till now, it's good. Uh, since I have come here for the first time, and uh, we have seen that means that there are the the coral uh, reefs are the nice, and uh, we are only um, uh, searching for that, okay. and the beaches also. That is the pollution free beaches also. It's water sports and adventure activities that's mainly the highlight of Lakshadweep and uh, you know scuba diving, snorkel, snorkeling and all these are some of the major highlights that the locals have been also highlighting about Lakshadweep. So uh, we can find a lot of tourists actually coming in and it's you know it looks like in the coming days, the coming years Lakshadweep is going to be one of the most hot spot of, uh, for the tourists across the country and abroad. With video journalist Kiran, this is Shivimol Keji for India Today from Lakshadweep.
Maldivian President Mohammad Moizo is in China on a five-day long state visit. On day two of his visit, he urged China to send more tourists to Maldives. So he's now urging China at a time when India diplomatic controversy is on. There were mass cancellations, remember, by Indians who were angered by the uh, sitting ministers of Moizo's party who have taken a run at India and uh, thrown some very insulting jibes. Maldives' president is now playing clearly, as many had said earlier as well, a pro-China card. But that's not the only concern. There is rising radicalization in the island nation. That's as much something that is a cause of concern for Maldives. After a spate of cancellations by Indian tourists in Maldives, the rattled president of Maldives has urged China to send more tourists to his island nation to prevent what many islanders there see as a disastrous outcome of his anti-India policies. Maldives President Mohammad Muizu is in China on a five-day state visit. He's accompanied by his wife, Sajida Mohammad, and a number of top Maldivian officials. China and Maldives are expected to ink a number of agreements on economic cooperation and trade. The fact that I'm here in China on my first state visit is testament to the commitment of His Excellency President Xi Jinping and the people of China to the Maldives. We have no doubt that China will be our closest partner in development. The free trade agreement signed between our countries stands as a symbol of the close commercial ties between China and Maldives. I'm told that it is the first comprehensive FTA between China and a South Asian country. Muizu was elected to office on an anti-India plank. After being sworn in as president, he first visited Turkey and then the UAE for the COP28 Environment Summit, where he had an interaction with Prime Minister Narendra Modi. But in a major departure from the past, Muizu chose not to visit India as his first port of call after being elected president. His five-day state visit to China is being seen as an attempt to play China against India. New Delhi chose not to react to Muizu, choosing to visit China first. It's a very short-sightedness on uh, the part of um, the present government uh, to really uh, think, you know, that uh, we can uh, really try to, like, not keep the age-old relationship that we have always had with India. Muizu is still in China's Fujian province, meeting provincial leaders on day two of his five-day visit. He's scheduled to meet Chinese President Xi Jinping, who is hosting a banquet in his honor, and will also meet the Chinese Premier. So yes, the trips um, obviously show that we have many friends across the world and that we wish to uh, strengthen those bonds as well. It does not undermine in any way our relationship to India. In Fujian, President Muizu addressed the Invest Maldives Forum. He described China as Maldives' valued ally and integral collaborator. But there are apprehensions that Maldives could be the next victim of China's Belt and Road Initiative after Sri Lanka and Pakistan. But a bigger cause for concern for Beijing could well be rising Islamist radicalization in Maldives. According to the US, 250 people from Maldives joined the Islamic State between 2014 and 18. Maldives is seen as the largest contributor to Islamic State terror. In 2023, US sanctioned 20 individuals in Maldives. In the same year, the US also sanctioned 29 companies for aiding Islamic State terror. Fugitive from law in India, Zakir Naik's speeches are viral in Maldives. The China-Pakistan-Maldives nexus could create additional challenges for India in the Indian Ocean region. Bureau Report, India Today.